Model steam engine live steam tests, this is part one. The first live steam test of three Cotswold heritage engines that I built into a steam plant. One of them needed some attention to the valve timing. I open the steam valve to the small vertical engine and that works okay. Then I open the steam valve to the aerial engine and that works fine too. And with a quick flick of the flywheel the Perseus engine bursts into life also, but the other two stop. It's a bit of a balancing act to get all the engines to run together. The boiler's quite small and immediately the pressure drops, but these engines are not under load, they work quite well. The pressure drops fairly quickly, but the engines keep going, which is a good thing. I'm going to pump some water into the boiler to see how far the pressure goes down. And when I pump the water in, the engines still run, which is a good thing, and the pressure drops to a very low figure. But nevertheless, the engines are still rotating, which is all that I want, really. Ordinarily I would use string on the steam inlet pipes of these engines but this steam is really not very hot by the time it's got down these long pipes and also white painted string would become very dirty very quickly if any attempt was made to clean the piping so I think for this plant the piping once it's all straightened out is going to look much better in natural copper. All of my copper pipe runs do not leak. This red vertical engine named after the Egyptian goddess Isis needs the piston rod repacking because it's leaking water a bit. The best runner is the Perseus on the right hand side, the blue engine, followed by the aerial in the middle which is fine but a little bit clunky, and then the one that's not running too well on the left hand side is the one called the Isis. The part of the base below the crankshaft is rapidly filling up with water, and periodically throughout the run I had to keep draining this using a syringe. So where's the water coming from? It's coming from the piston rod gland. From what I can gather, this seems to have been a long-standing problem with this engine. There are a few marks on the gland nut where some previous attempt at retightening it has failed. In the first episode, I think it was the first episode when I first ran these engines, I did notice that this one was a bit wheezy, and I would think that's because the pistons won. Due to either excessive running, or more likely lack of lubrication, and that's also why the piston rod gland is worn too. Tightening the gland nut on this type of engine is difficult, particularly when it's a nut like this. It's much better if it's just a ring with lots of little holes in it, so you can put a rod in there to move it around. Anyway, I couldn't really do the job properly, so I'm going to take the engine apart. Not just to look at the gland problem, I'm also going to change the piston ring, because from what I can tell of the sound and feel of this engine, which has negligible power, the piston ring is worn out. When I removed the cylinder head, I noticed some sealant. This could be the latex type sealant, which is acceptable. I don't think it's silicone rubber. In the previous clip, I showed how I broke the seal using a very sharp craft knife. And in this clip, I'm using an Allen key to remove the bolt that holds the piston to the piston rod. Once I removed the piston, this is what I found. The piston ring is very odd. It doesn't feel like a Viton piston ring, nor is it a silicone rubber piston ring. It just feels like an ordinary neoprene one, and it's very worn. I didn't have any piston rings like this, either of the correct size or the correct diameter, so I quickly went up to Blackgate's Engineering and bought some of them. The only minor problem is, this piston ring doesn't fit. Blackgate's Engineering didn't have any piston rings in stock the same size as the original. These are the type of piston rings I normally use, so it's a very quick job. To mount the piston on a mandrel, and this is a 2BA stud which is 3 16 of an inch diameter, just like the hole in the piston, and with the entire assembly mounted in my 3-jaw chuck in the Boxford lathe, 
I'm using a parting tool in the tool post to machine the groove to the correct width and depth. For an o-ring to work successfully in a piston like this, the groove needs to be the correct depth and exactly the right width. And for successful operation of the o-ring in a cylinder, these dimensions are very important. There's a wealth of information available online. This next part of the job is important. You must lubricate the groove in the piston before fitting the o-ring. I'm using my normal lubrication mixture, which is mainly steam oil, if ever it comes out of the oil can. Ah, there it goes. With the piston refitted to the piston rod and the crosshead in place, it's time to pack the gland. I'm using graphited yarn for this. What you need to aim for with a steam engine is early admission, but on an engine with maybe a small flywheel like this, admission just on top dead centre is permissible, but certainly not after top dead centre. As you can see, I reconnected the steam pipes and I raised steam and the engine's running on steam at the moment. I think I'd better shut the drain valve on the displacement lubricator. And as you can clearly see in this clip, the engine is rotating, but it's not running very smoothly. When you watch the three engines running together, you will see that the Perseus on the right hand side is really revolving smoothly. And look at the engine on the left hand side, it's very lumpy. It's only just making it at the end of each stroke. As I'm pumping water into the boiler, the pressure's dropped and the engine stopped. So here I'm starting it up again. And I can really feel now that it is so far out, I think I'm going to adjust the timing. And in an ideal world with perfect engineering, this would be okay. But often you have to move it just off that position one way or another. If you move it one way, you're retarding the timing. If you move it the other way, you're advancing it. You need to aim for it to be letting the steam in just before top dead center. That cushions all the movements. The engine runs a lot better, as you can see here, and it's a lot quieter. Everything's running very smoothly once again, but this time the engine on the left has got quite a lot of power and it's not taking quite as much steam as it did in the first place. That's it for the first episode of the series. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.